बिस्मिलीम हाइपर टेंशन इन प्रेगनेंसी इज अ वेरी कॉमन कंडीशन इफेक्टिंग अबाउट फाइव टू एट परसेंट ऑफ प्रेगनेंसी सो इम प्रॉपर प्रिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ एंटी हाइपर टेंसिव मेडिकेशन टू सच पेशेंट्स ड्यू टू लैक ऑफ सफिशियंट नॉलेज कैन लीड टू सर्टन जजमेंटल एरर्स विच कैन कॉज सेवरल एडवर्स इफेक्ट फेस्ड बाय द पेशेंट so before daring to prescribe the medication to any patient a doctor must be confident that he or she knows about how to prescribe the medication he or she now has an ability to prescribe transcribe administer and monitor that specific drug or medicine so hello and welcome to our youtube channel obstetric and gynecology the lead channel in this field all over the world for delivering excellence brilliance and quality education in line with the proven and authentic guidelines like rcog nice bash guidelines the talk articles and acog guidelines so i would like you to prescribe our channel and click the community section of this channel to get all obs and gyne and sick use for free for exam practice now coming to the main topic anti hypertensive drugs of choice in pregnancy when we talk about the drug of choice for hypertension in pregnancy labetalol should be on the top because it is the recommendation by nice guideline that as compared to other drugs labetalol has proven to be effective with a minimum side effects in pregnancy so how does this labetalol acts in our body what is the mechanism of action of labetalol so basically Labetalol is combined alpha and beta adrenoreceptor blocking agent for the treatment of hypertension. And it's important to know that it is non-selective antagonist at beta adrenoreceptor, which means that it can act on both beta one and beta two, and is a competitive antagonist of postsynaptic. alpha 1 adrenal receptors here you can see the site of action of labetalol labetalol basically works both on the heart and blood vessels so as the beta blocker it works by blocking the effect of hormone epinephrine also known as adrenaline beta blocker like labetalol causes the heart beat to move slowly with the less force which lowers the blood pressure so it slows down the heart rate and makes it easier for the heart to pump blood around the body and as i've told you it works at the arterial level as well so as an alpha antagonist which are the alpha receptors are pr present at the level of arteries so as an alpha antagonist it causes the vasodilatation it prevents the vasoconstrictor effect of the alpha receptors and in that way it causes the vasodilatation so both of these effects results in decreasing blood pressure now what is the dose of labetalol in pregnancy initially we give 100 mg two times daily okay that depends upon the blood pressure of the patient and if the blood pressure remains uncontrolled we can increase it by 100 by adding 100 more twice daily every second to third day uh, depending upon the requirements so the usual effective dose is about 200 to 800 mg given in the divided doses and what is the maximum dose that is 2400 mg we shouldn't exceed this 2400 mg in case of labetalol now how this injectable form of labetalol is given so commence labetalol treatment with iv bolus administer labetalol 20 mg as slow iv bolus over 2 minutes okay so this ampules contain 100 mg per 20 ml it means in every ml we have 5 mg and as i have told you that we have to give 20 mg but very slowly it's very important the uh, the method of administration is very important it's not that every uh, person um, every quack every chemist working in the medicine uh, 
shops or anyone can administer the technique of administration needs to be learned before we approach to administer this medicine okay and that is it is given as slow iv bolus over 2 minutes along with the proper technique of administration we need to learn how uh, we need to do monitoring so record heart rate and bp every 5 minutes until it is stable of less than 155 by 95 mm mercury for 15 minutes sometime we need to repeat the dose so repeat labetalol bolus of 20 mg every 10 minute as necessary to maximum dose of uh, maximum of four doses once bp is stabilized start four hourly monitoring now here you are seeing the infusion pump if bp is not controlled by uh, four boluses of labetalol which we give give a continuous iv infusion the aim is to lower blood pressure by 10 to 20 mm mercury over 20 to 40 minutes now what are the contraindications of labetalol first of all it is contraindicated in bronchial asthma it's because i told you that um, beta blocker like labetalol is non selective and it blocks uh, both beta 1 and beta 2 uh, receptors so as beta 2 receptors are present uh, in the uh, bronchi and in the airway so it can causes the airway constriction that's why it is contraindicated in asthma secondly it should be avoided in ca cardiogenic shock as it tends to slow the heart rate by acting on the beta 2 receptors on the heart thirdly in hepatic impairment it is contraindicated because it undergoes the rapid first pass metabolism by the liver in case of hypersensitivity the labetalol is contraindicated because the labetalol itself can induce hypersensitivity syndrome and lastly in the severe bradycardia this labetalol should be uh, avoided because It's an alpha antagonist and it causes vasodilatation resulting in severe bradycardia. Now coming to the second line of drug which is hydralazine. So let us study its mechanism of action. Hydralazine selectively relaxes arteriolar smooth muscle. Okay so basically it interferes with the calcium transport in the vascular smooth muscle and tends to relax the arteriolar smooth muscles and lowers the blood pressure it decreases pulmonary vascular resistance and uh, decreases the blood pressure now coming to the dose of hydralazine tablets hydralazine tablets are given in the dose of 25 mg 3 times per day with a maximum dose of 2 g daily Now coming to hydralazine injection in uncontrolled high blood pressure in obstetrics hydralazine injection is given by preparing it in a proper way so how to prepare it take 3 ml of distilled water to 1 cc vial which contain about 20 mg of hydralazine so make it 4 cc vial which which means 5 mg per ml now give 5 mg iv stat means 1 ml of the prepared solution as a stat dose and repeat after every 30 minutes till the maximum of 15 mg is reached monitor bp after every 5 minutes the aim is to keep systolic blood pressure of less than 150 mm mercury and diastolic between 80 to 100 mm mercury the contraindications to hydralazine include coronary artery disease mitral valvular rheumatic heart disease and hypersensitivity to hydralazine now coming to the third line of drug that is nifedipine so let us explain the mechanism of action of nifedipine nifedipine is a calcium channel blocker it works by preventing calcium from entering the cells of the heart and arteries now calcium causes the heart and arteries to squeeze or contract more strongly so by blocking the calcium by the calcium channel blocker they allow the blood vessels to relax and open it inhibits the smooth muscles of the vessels leading to vasodilatation so in this way it results in decreasing the blood pressure now dose of nifedipine nifedipine comes in different um brands and different formulations like we have adelet tablet of 10 mg tablet nifid of 10 mg adelet r 20 mg adelet la 60 mg so initial dose is 30 to 60 mg orally once a day maintenance dose is 30 to 90 mg orally once a day and the maximum dose is up to 
120 milligram per day. Now, what are the contraindications of nifedipine? First of all, it should be avoided in the cardiac patients because it can uh, cause the ventricular collapse and dysfunction. Nifedipine basically causes the reflexive increase in cardiac contractility, which increases the uh, myocardial oxygen demand and worsens the ischemia. Secondly, it should be avoided in the multiple pregnancy as it can cause the acute uh, pulmonary edema, especially in the patients with the multiple pregnancy. In diabetic patients, should be avoided because it can cause the pulmonary edema. And also, it should be uh, avoided with the magnesium sulfate because simultaneous use with the magnesium sulfate can uh, potentiate its effect leading to toxicity. Coming to the side effects of nephiripine, those include headache, pulmonary edema, reflux tachycardia, and facial flushing. Now, let us discuss the last dose, which is last drug, which is the methyl dopa. Methyl dopa is a centrally acting alpha agonist, which inhibits the central sympathetic outflow. Okay, so methyl dopa is basically metabolized by dopamine beta hydrogenase to its active metabolized uh, metabolite alpha methyl norepinephrine, as you can see here. Okay, now this compound acts as an agonist at the presynaptic alpha 2 uh, adrenergic receptor in the brain stem, resulting in the reduced adrenergic neuronal outflow through the peri peripheral nervous system, and that can lead to vasodilatation and reduced blood pressure. Now, how much is the dose of methyl dopa? Methyl dopa comes in different brands like uh, uh, dopa tab. Dopigate and aldermate, etc. The commonest among all is that of tablet aldermate. It is taken as a 250 milligram tablet, taken um, three times a day, TDS or QID means four times a day, with a maximum dose of two grams. Now, let us discuss few side effects of methyl dopa. We have certain uh, minor side effects like a patient may feel tiredness, loss of energy, weakness, dizziness, headache, nausea and vomiting, nightmares, postural hypertension, reflux tachycardia. But we should be concerned about the major side effects of methyl dopa, which include depression, the liver dysfunction, and hemolytic anemia. Okay, thank you so much. That was uh, the description about few important drugs, antihypertensive drugs, which are prescribed in the pregnancy, which should be prescribed in the pregnancy, and we should know which drugs are needed to be prescribed in pregnancy with the hypertension. In order to study uh, the uh, NICE guideline about hypertension, uh, you can go to the same channel and write a nice guideline about hypertension. Thank you so much.